Let's take a look at some charts on Ethereum from this week's article on Brave New Coin. So I'll get to the TLDW first in that for me, all that really matters about Ethereum is the inflation, the supply, and where the supply is being locked up. Previously, it was ICO Treasuries. Currently, it's DeFi, a little bit of ETH 2.0 with a lot of inflation baggage, inflationary baggage still attached. So for me, that's, I think, why ETH hasn't moved like it did in 2017, where we had everybody and their mother buying Ethereum, throwing it into an ICO. The treasury was either held for some period of time or is still being held. And it just was a process that kept repeating itself. We even had treasuries investing in other ICOs. And that's obviously a risk on risk on risk situation. But when prices are going up, it's amazing. When prices are going down, it's catastrophic. It just enhances the price action, both directions. So if we start by looking at some hash rate and difficulty, ETH's hash rate is actually within the all-time high range. It was at a devastating low, almost mirroring October because earlier this year, because of uh, the difficulty adjustment, the Ice Age. These are all sort of artificial difficulty adjustments. These exist because they thought they'd have ETH 2.0 at each of these time points, and they, they didn't. So they had to adjust the inflation accordingly, basically to allow for rewards to continue. If they hadn't adjusted this difficulty here, then the network basically was dead <laughs> because difficulty was too high for hash rate and miners wouldn't, wouldn't get paid and miners wouldn't be securing the network and it would just be a catastrophic spiral out of control. Uh, so now it's a lot healthier in that it's more organic as far as what's been decided for the inflation. And this could change at any given moment, especially with ETH 2.0. There's some post about Vitalik saying it's deflationary now. I don't know. I don't, the thing about ETH, the other bottom line with ETH, it's so hard to like write, talk about because anything can change in any moment. It's both beautiful and frustrating because a lot of this stuff is very dynamic and fluid. So, you know, I might say one thing in the article or I might read one thing today and it'll be different tomorrow, depending on what sort of devs decided on a solution to a problem but nevertheless hash rate is up why is hash rate up likely because of not only this new miner in may but this new miner which was probably covertly mining this entire time typically i don't know if silicon does this but as miners are being produced they're immediately put into production and then they are shipped out when they are sold so whether or not that's a practice that should be allowable, it's tolerated. I don't know if Inosilicon does that. They might not, but Bitmain definitely does. And this profitability is extremely high for any coin, any algorithm. Uh, so I expect, despite all of these miners being bricked within the next two years, in that there will be no proof of work on the network within the next two years. In the meantime, you can very, at the very least get your ROI on whatever this miner costs rather quickly. Now, if prices continue to go, to go up and fees stay the same or go up, profitability will only get better for these miners, and it will only make it more attractive for hash rate. If we look at inflation and block count, block count is basically at an all-time high because block times are an all-time low, around 13 seconds. Inflation rate is near an all-time low. You can see during each of these um, ice ages where inflation dropped way down. And it was adjusted after the hard fork. So this will continue to decrease. It's around 4, 450, 4.50% right now, something like that. Still rather high, still rather high, considering Bitcoin's at 1.8, Monero's at 1.8. Um, there's a lot of, there's, there's a few coins rather that have a lower inflation than ETH. You can't talk about ETH without talking about Tether because ETH, Tether on ETH has exploded recently hit another all-time high in transaction counts. Another reason why ETH fees are so high is because ERC-20 Tether has killed Omni Tether. I mean, it's, there's a pretty clear winner here. There's virtually no transactions on Omni Tether anymore. At some point, it may be cheaper to actually send it on Omni. Probably not as fast. It's probably faster to send on ETH, depending on the number of transaction confirmations required where you're sending it. But the market has chosen, has spoken, 
and uh, ERC-20 tethers the winner. 65% of all tether currently sits on ERC-20. Looking at ETH transactions count and transaction fees. Fees went way up in August. They've gone, come way down since then. Still historically extremely high from where they used to be. This makes it very difficult to use smart contracts or microtransactions on ETH. It's deceptively a good probable problem. You know, if your use case is microtransactions and dApps and all this other stuff, and it brings everybody to the chain, which it clearly has, mainly through gambling, which is trading. I mean, let's be real here. All this stuff, none of this stuff is changing the world for the better. It's all yield farming, trading, speculation. But nevertheless, fees are still extremely high. So if this is the new normal for ETH, it may be problematic for many projects, especially, you know, you look at this and you say, oh, fees aren't that bad. They're only a buck fifty on average. But when you interact with smart contracts that are complex and those smart contracts interact with other smart contracts, you're talking about fees in the hundreds of dollars currently and thousands of dollars in August. And that just isn't sustainable. Prices a lot of people out of the market. Um, transactions have gone down since August and have sort of stabilized. It's weird for me. Transactions, transaction counts on ETH are more important than active addresses, whereas active addresses on BTC look more important than transactions per day. So I would definitely rather see ETH transactions rising than falling if I'm bullish ETH right now. If we look at ETH active addresses, also nearing all time highs, also still pushing above 500,000. Um, ETH NVT, inverse metric of economic utility, is kind of near all-time lows. Slightly rising, but still looks really good. It just says the market cap is not priced in on-chain activity. It's, it kind of says ETH is cheap right now, is the vibe I'm getting from this, this NVT. I do think inflation is still a little too high for ETH to see like massive multiples of price beyond 750 in the near term. In the next six months, let's say. We're going to have to see just more and more supply locked into DeFi or ETH 2.0. And if we look at ICO treasuries, again, if we're talking about supply and demand, this is all I care about with any token. Who are the hodlers? Who are the whales? Who is selling? When are they selling? What are the big wallets doing? The big wallets in 2017-2018 were ICOs, and during the bear market, they just kept selling, 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 selling. Now they have almost nothing left, which is really the best case scenario because that supply glut, supply overhang can't really affect price too much anymore. Yeah, it's around 800,000 plus ETH that are in ICO treasuries. But at this point, that's uh, kind of next to nothing from where it was. So that concern is over. This wouldn't have been a concern if these projects like did something or were useful in some way. <laughs> but most of these projects are just sort of, were just sort of fly by night, uh, took years to do nothing, development hell, bloatware. Uh, you know, you can, I can't think of a single project ICO that I'd consider today a major success. Not that they attempted to do stuff. Most of them just never really took hold. Look at total value staked in the ETH 2.0 address. It's currently around 100,000. So as, you know, as ICO treasuries decline, we're going to see ETH 2.0 being staked, uh, ETH staked and ETH 2.0 being staked increasing, currently 100,000. We're going to see um, DAP activity, DeFi Pulse activity, um, total ETH locked should be rising, should continue to rise, ideally if you're bullish. Their numbers are a bit wonky. Sometimes the, um, you have to check it like multiple times a day to see what these values actually are because they kind of go all over the place. So this looks like a ton of ETH came off. In the, according to their numbers, so I'm not really sure. Um, but looking at DeFi stuff, I mean, Uniswap is still killing it. 30-day volume, 29 billion. Curve, 15 billion. Um, multiple projects in the billions of dollars of volume here. Mostly DeFi, mostly exchanges. Less and less outright scams, which is, I don't know what Barnbridge is. Nest, I think, is a scam. <laughs> um, but exchange, exchange, uh, lending, yield, exchange. You know, all this stuff is a legitimate exchange for the most part. No no outright gambling dApps, no dice dice games or anything anymore that are getting the volume. It's mainly just uh, exchanges at this point. If we look at Google Trends for ETH, still quite low, just like everything in crypto right now. There's no really exciting Google Trends out there. 
in general, if Google Trends are rising, you expect rising prices as well. It just goes hand in hand. And if we look at uh, the DeFi crypto Google Trend and yield farming Google Trend, both have come way down over the past few weeks, which kind of mirrors just DeFi prices in general. I mean, this stuff was pretty FOMO frothy and that can't sustain itself over a long period of time. If we look at technicals for ETH, comparing all the market caps, ETH has outperformed most of the high cap coins has not outperformed BTC since Q4 began, but it's not doing terribly. Just has been much less exciting since October. ETH kind of had its moment in um, August with all the DeFi stuff. I mean, Link, Link just what a monster of a move here from July to August. Kind of insane. But ETH still looking for some momentum. I think technical still look good if we look at Open interest in uh, Bitfinex up top here, yearly pivots, VP, VR, volume profile of the visible range, volume, RSI, 5,200 EMAs. Uh, trend metrics, love it, super bullish. 15 and 200 are both rising at a decent rate. It's currently between R2 and R3 yearly pivot. R3 yearly pivots around 550. So that's the expectation should this level hold, which I believe it will. I wouldn't say there's an outright uh, cup and handle on any of this like on a macro scale but if you zoom in on this part here there could be a cup and handle situation to 550. I didn't put that in the article but looking at it now I can see that. VPVR looks good in that most of the volume is below price so all that should act as support. There's currently some volume here at around 470. A little notch in the ladder. If price can hold above that level that's pretty bullish. And above us there's really nothing until 700. Um, even price-wise, there's really nothing up here. Uh, we went from ascending triangle to head and shoulders to inverted Adam and Eve, <laughs> though M double top. Um, so I think it'll take some consolidation to get through 500 to 750, but I still think that's highly probable within the next 12 to 18 months. ETH longs on Bifinex are quite scary in that they keep growing as price is rising. Typically that leads to a long squeeze. If price drops suddenly or continues to drop, those longs will come off and then price will go down even further responding to that. The good news is most of these longs are long from like 150, 180. So they really are at no risk of being squeezed here. That's, that's the only good news. There's still a ton of long interest. So if this starts to come off, that will have a massive effect on price. Definitely keep an eye on that. If you look at the pitchfork, it is a trend channel with specific rules. Three points here, and if it's up and up fork, it is bullish. So the expectation is price will hover around this yellow median line most of the trend, and it'll be overbought up here, oversold down here. Sell zone, buy zone. It still looks like it's headed to north of 700, north of 650. It still looks okay. You may get a few more touches on the yellow line here, but this is incredibly bullish, especially if it's on the upper half of the bullish pitchfork. That's exactly what you want to see. If you're bullish, this is the daily cloud using 20, 60, 120, 30 settings. And again, trend-wise, much like the 15 to 200, it's bullish. It's above the cloud. It's got a bullish TK cross that occurred in late October. Decent reaction from there. Just looks a little tired. Now the cloud is kind of flat. These TK lines are kind of flat. It's better to see rising, rising TK lines, rising cloud. If you're confident in that the trend will continue, if there's strong bullish continuation, right now it just kind of looks lethargic. Um, you can almost see this potential cup and handle better here on this time frame, but something to watch for. And then lastly, ETH BTC has just been rocked since October 1st. It reached the R1 pivot, it reached all this VPVR volume and just said nope and it's now below the two the 200 period moving average on the two day which is the 400 day moving average um, i zoomed out on this ETH btc because it acts pretty slow in general and for me there's only a few trades on ETH btc that are worth taking because it tends to trend so hard they're all kind of highlighted here but right now to me i don't really see a trade trade setup here i'd love to see some consolidation in the previous support resist area at the, the yearly pivot, but I don't really see a trade set up here. So overall, as the number two coin in the ecosystem, I think ETH is 
doing fine. It's clearly developed some substantial use cases for DEXs and trading and yield farming. It's got some changes coming up over the next few years, potentially for the better. We'll, we'll see. I don't, I don't know of any proof of state coin that's really done anything substantial. And that's where ETH is headed. So maybe, the, maybe ETH will be the first one there. But technicals for ETOSD look great. Technicals for ETH BTC look neutral to mediocre with no 